Velachara offers seniors beautiful apartment living. It's a special secure place to belong, providing choice, freedom and professional care. Each spacious apartment comes with an ensuite, veranda, security and on-call nurses. Entertain your guests in the elegantly appointed shared spaces. Our vibrant activities program will keep your mind and body active. Bella Chara welcomes new residents. Call us today on 52025300 for a personal tour. Good evening and welcome to our weekly program of News Geelong. A lot happening in Australia's most livable city, Geelong and surrounding districts, and all of a continued positive basis. Tonight we look at the flowers and the surf. With the country dahlias open day five kilometres south of Winchelsea through to April 22, and the Department of Sustainability and Environment, together with the Surf Coast Shire, maintaining pressure on tourist buses that are using valuable car park space at Bells Beach without the necessary permits. From the world of sport, local cricket finals continue into semi finals weekend, and in GBR Division 1 pennant bowls, it's Grand Final Sunday at Drysdale, where Queenscliff takes on Belmont for 2013 pennant honours, as well as highlights from the Place for Pace Avalon Speedway and the launch of the Geelong Siebel Supercast 2013 season. The Jane Goodall Institute is an international wildlife and environment conservation organisation with many branches around the world. The Geelong Chamber of Commerce had the Australian Ambassador of the Institute as a special guest speaker this week, as Ian Nichols caught up with Peter Fitzsimons at the pier. Well, News Geelong today is at the pier again, and this time it's the Geelong Chamber of Commerce Presidential Luncheon. And they have a very special guest speaker, a man who's made the transition from rugby, he was a wallaby, one of the greatest, to writing. And we talk about Peter Fitzsimons, almost 20 books to his credit. In fact, he's working on the 20th right now, we've just found out. The Life and Times of Ned Kelly. And here's the guest speaker today, and a wonderful opportunity for a lot of Geelong business people to meet the man. You've got your presidential luncheon today here at the pier and you've managed to attract a high profile, iconic Australian for uh, your guest today. We have indeed Ian, we have uh, Peter Fitzsimons who's joining us today as our keynote speaker and he's flown in from, I think he flew in from New Zealand last night, um, arrived in Melbourne and he was picked up this morning and, and brought to Geelong so we've put on the sunshine for him which is fantastic and then he'll be straight off back to Sydney after this. Well he's one of the most sought after, uh, if you like, after dinner speakers around Australia. So it's a bit of a coup for the Chamber as well. It is an absolute coup. We're absolutely delighted that he could uh, attend and be our, our guest speaker. And we owe that to the Jane Goodall Institute that organised it. So he has a strong connection with that institute. And so we're delighted that uh, he was able to make it down here today. Natalie, I believe it's through the good sponsorship of the Jane Goodall Institute that uh, Peter Fitzsimons is here today. Yes, Peter Fitzsimons is actually our patron, so he's very kindly given us his time today to support the Jane Goodall Institute of Australia. Now you can perhaps tell us a little of the work that the Institute does. The Jane Goodall Institute was founded by Dr Jane Goodall, who many people would know because of her study of chimpanzees, but she's also about, her work is about much more than chimpanzees, it's about um, educating a, a whole generation of young people to overcome the problems that matter to them, because the young, our young generation are going to face challenges that other generations have, have never faced, challenges regarding an environmental, uh, concerning the environment, concerning human rights and also um, animal welfare um, issues. The first time I ever came to Geelong was only about four or five months ago. I was doing a story for Channel 7, if I can mention that on Channel 31, on uh, a wonderful woman that lives here who's about to have a bionic eye. Yeah, so it's interesting. Die. Well, today, of course, it's a very special occasion for the Chamber as well, and yes. uh, they're very indebted to the Jane Goodall Institute for you uh, to come down here yeah. and be their guest. Well, they're a wonderful organisation, and my family and I went to Africa two years ago, and what we saw was both wondrous and confronting, because what we saw was just wonderful the animals in the wild, but what was confronting were the bulldozers on the edge pushing in and pushing in, and in the end, if we don't do something and if we don't help to save the animals, it will be our generation will be a pox on the history of the world. Well, 
it's a very worthwhile cause and no doubt a huge challenge, but you've started the ball rolling. That's, that's the first thing we've got to say. Raising awareness is not enough. It needs money as well. It needs people to write checks and to actually put time and energy into it. It's all very well to say we want to save the chimpanzees and we want to save the elephants and we want to save the rhino, but it actually needs activity. Well, being a broadcaster and a writer, a prolific writer, almost 20 books now, how do you find time for all of these ventures that you embark upon? And the, the sad answer is only just. As uh, the lady that picked me up from Jane Goodall's Institute today picked me up at 10.45, I was in my hotel room in Melbourne and I stopped writing at 10.35 and I said to her, look, I don't mean to be rude, but I just need to write all the way to Geelong. We got here at 10 past 12 and I said, look, I don't need to be rude, but I need to sit in the corner. And it's just at the moment, I'm right under the gun, I'm doing a book on Ned Kelly. So my head is filled with Ned at the moment, the siege of Glen Rowan. And uh, I love writing, but it's a bit obsessive, I must say. And I must say lately, I'm just going, you know, well, it's getting, days are getting shorter, it must be coming close to winter. <laughs> We've just got over Eureka, of course. That's been a wonderful read. And yeah, and uh, it's the first time I'd really focused on Geelong. I had, I mean, in my ignorance from New South Wales, I hadn't really understood how Geelong fitted into the scheme of Victoria. I hadn't quite realised its importance. And I might say again, when I came here four months ago, I had no idea of the beauty of the, do we call it the pier, the, you know, the, the waterfront. It's funny. I don't think Geelong sells itself well enough somehow. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And people that live at Geelong are no doubt people that live in Melbourne and no doubt people that live in Victoria know. But I'll tell you what, the rest of us don't. And I, I, I took our Winnebago through Geelong um, three, three or four years ago. Had no idea that all this beauty was all around us. Can you tell us a bit more about Ned Kelly? How, how far off is that? Well, it'll be hopefully on the stores by, by Christmas, in the stores by Christmas. Um, it's going to be a fairly big book. And what I've done is I, my publishers don't agree, but I agree, and that's what counts. I want to call it Ned Kelly Rides Again, and it is to try to write the book in a manner so that the reader feels like they're with Ned at Stringy Bar Creek as he lines up Constable Lonigan to make them feel like they're there on the morning of 11th of November as the noose sways in front of Ned's head. And because it's a subject that's been so well covered and so 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 interesting for people at the time and people since the amount of material is overwhelming but the amount of original material is fantastic because every bastard that had anything to do with it wrote it down and either that or told these children but or her children but you know diaries letters newspaper accounts transcripts of court cases it's all there and you can put it together pretty well what the conversations were and you know there it's been really well done to to the McEnany book is brilliantly done and the Ian Jones book is particularly brilliantly done and I I take my hats off my my bandana off to them um, but I've got like as I speak now I've got four researchers trawling through court transcripts and newspaper transcripts and I'm just trying to build it up and build it up and make it live and breathe. His final words, there's still some controversy over that. There is controversy um, over that. I believe he did say that, such is life. And uh, the, the other version is, ah, well, it's come to this. Either way, he was sanguine as he went to his death. I do recall that uh, Ben Cousins, the uh, former West Coast yeah. Eagle and uh, later Richmond player, had emblazoned across his uh, abs, I suppose, yeah. uh, such is life. Such is life. Well, if he's like me, by the time he gets to 50, that tat will be a bit bigger. <laughs> That's, well, could, Bill, thank you so much for your time. I know you're extremely you. busy. And you made that wonderful uh, transition from, uh, from uh, rugby to writing. And I'm only just breaking into stride. Thank you, Geelong, for having me. I've had a lovely time. At the pier for the Geelong Chamber of Commerce Presidential Luncheon, Ian Nichols, News Geelong. Thank you, Ian, and a very special Geelong thanks to Peter Fitzsimons. This is News Geelong on this Friday evening as we head to a break. You can view your favourite News Geelong segments on the whole or the whole program on www.youtube forward slash guest media. We'll return with more news after this. <laughs> 